It's, it's not like normal cities, clubs right. that, that bands would play in. It's, uh, you know, um, ski resorts Pubs, and everything. Yeah. yeah, like near the town at least. So it's like a lot of these kids that that live in those towns are near. They don't they don't get the shows coming in. So right. like the clubs we've played in so far, they told us that uh, you know we're the, the heaviest band that's ever been there. You know, <laughs> yeah. something like that. So it's really cool though. We we come on the other side of the country and kids are just screaming. Really great. Yeah, yeah it's that's great. It's a lot yeah. of fun. The guys in Ugly Kid Joe are real cool too. Yeah. So. We only had two shows so far, but we're going back to three weeks of it, and it's going to be great. Oh, nice one. So, you know, um, the records that the or Borrow King's albums had a lot of success in Europe, and it's, you know, it's gone really fast here. For, is it, is it com comparatively moving faster for you in Europe than it is in the States? Yeah. I like, would say, yeah. Like, a lot more. Because, Why would you think that is? Well, distribution, I would say, more than anything. Uh, our label here is doing real good. They've been situated for a long time out of Holland, and basically, back in, in New York, we only have a big office there and right. not that much uh, on the West Coast. So we've been pretty well covered in the New York area. Right. But outside of that, you know, it's, uh, it's more of a work. The thing about our band is no matter where we go, you know, when we tour, we sell albums, kids come out to the shows. Right. It's good like that. We haven't done that extensive touring in the U.S. that we've done in Europe. We spent four months in Europe last year touring. Didn't you play with off. Biohazard on tour? Right. Yep. That's Biohazard. what really like broke us yeah. in Europe. We haven't had a break like that in the States. We've really toured maybe eight weeks in the States total for all Borough right. Kings. And here, you know, as John said, like four months. So that's why there's a lot more promotion over here and, and hype, whereas the States, it's, we're really definitely still very underground. Right, you know? right. We're trying to change that. It'll happen. Now. It'll happen. Yeah, well, I mean, we're still really psyched that you know, almost a year later, our album still seems to have the legs it did at the beginning, right. you know, back in April. So we're happy about that. I mean, at least we're still getting the support in Europe and America. A lot of bands don't get that. Get, like, really heavily categorized. And you've managed to just, like, kick all that out of the way. I mean, like, say with, on the MTV situation, you would be suitable to, like, any of, of the, the strands, you know, the, the styles of music. Do you think that um, audiences like it like that and kind of get, people get turned off bands when they, you know, this is our direct thing? You know. I, I don't know, you know, I think if you can present anything that hasn't been done before, right. then you're you're doing something good because this day with bands are so oversaturated that it's mm -hmm. it's they all sound alike or something like that. And and I, I hope and we've always tried to have a sound that wasn't in any one way, you know, right. any style of music. And obviously by by the way we've been um treated like we're we're like a crossover of hip hop, reggae uh, hardcore, right. metal, whatever it is, and nobody has ever been able to put us in one category. Right. And, and we like that, and I hope that that way different groups of people can can come together and our audience is just going to grow like that. Because right. and, and you add to it as well, I mean, like the brass section is kind of like a, a late addition, really, isn't it? In the, it wasn't of, there right at the yeah. beginning, was it? it? It's been around, you know, we had uh, brass in one of the first songs we wrote, right. but as it got more developed, as the newer song, say from All Borough King, got written and developed, we had the saxophone guys with us every day writing right. the songs when we were hanging out, and it became more and more a part of things, and now people are saying, well, is your horn section with you on the road? What's going on? And of course, you know, we don't want to put anything on the record that we can't duplicate right. live. And uh, even more and more today, now the you know saxophone player, we're at his house writing new material, and he's totally a part of it. Right. You know, we're trying to get maybe some keys into our next yeah. next effort and right. percussion. We just really want to kind of blow it open, and I think we're going to become even less categorized now. Right. Yeah. You know, maybe the press would was quick to you know lump us in with with a biohazard or something like right. that. But you know, we've toured with all types of bands in Europe. You know, we brought pretty much local bands out with us when we were in Germany, Holland, Belgium, stuff like that. We had local acts playing with us, and I think that's good because we gave them some right. exposure and also opened up, you know, doors for us, whereas kids could hear different kinds of music with us. You know, we had Joyrider with us when we were in England, right. and we're totally d two different, really, styles. Sure, we got yeah. along well as mates, and uh, I think kids enjoyed the fact that there was two different bands right. going on. So what are the, like, the early musical reference points like for, for, the, for the members, like, not as the band, but like, what was you growing up with, like, you know, what was well, it like in your growing candle? up was Ozzy like Kiss, you know, all, <laughs> all the standard metal I right. made in, you know. But I mean, also we, like Elton John, yeah. the Bee Gees, right. you know, I mean, I could yeah. get into anything. Everything. I mean, we definitely, I was doing yeah. that uh, John Travolta dance <laughs> to the, uh, to the uh, Saturday Night yeah. Fever soundtrack right. when it came out too, you know, right. but... Uh, that's the thing, we have such a, a diverse background that that's why today, 
we're doing what we're doing because right. we, we grew up listening to metal, so we know how metal's supposed to go. But we also, you know, he listens to hip hop like crazy. Right. I listen to like movie soundtracks, so I'm like on a completely different thing. But we know what we want to do when we get together. Right. And we know the way the band should be, and that's what's cool. The thing is, too, that like now, even now, we'll listen to all types of music. You know, anything can be thrown in the tape deck when we're on the bus or right. just hanging out. Because that's always a problem, isn't it? Like beating each other up who yeah. gets control of the deck. But we, but we totally listen from everything from ACDC to new stuff. You know, right. Veruca Salt, The Talking Clouds the new is stuff, a great band. You're going to pick us uh, a video to watch now. What is it going to be? The yeah. Sea there. Yeah, Can't yeah. Veruca the Salt, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's Favorite a, alternative clip. Yeah, it's got <laughs> girls in the band, so right. <laughs> So I reckon you're the guys to ask this, why is snowboarding seen as so much cooler than your basic skiing? What has happened? Snowboarding kind of blew up, I think, because of it was just the alternative music timing and I think ski industry, like kids were getting bored of it right. because it just, there, there was no progression in it, you know? A few people could go big and do the flips and everything like that, but that's not realistic and people were looking for something and skateboarding and surfing combine together to make snowboarding on the mountain and it's just really exciting I mean there, you got to do something in the winter it's going to be cold it's going to be right. snowy unless you're in Florida or Spain or something like that so why not get on the mountain and snowboard and it really is a lot more exciting than skiing I think you can use utilize the mountain a lot better right. than maybe you can on skis and it's just a it's younger really, sport too yeah. like you know I mean it's mostly the, the kids who are into skating and surfing like you said so like you don't see too many like you know, old people on vacation on the snowboards, although that would be great, but, but you, you do. know. But like, it, I'm starting to see more and more converted skiers and they're just not going back. I don't see any reason to. Yeah, Snowboarding's a little to, bit, yeah. it's a lot freer, you know, you don't have the same limitations. With skis, you fall down, you pop apart like a toy car or something. <laughs> really, you lose everything, but snowboarding, you can fall on your butt, maintain speed, get back up. <laughs> And save yourself. So, with all this like activity that you do, you know, with your skateboarding and the snowboard, your insurance policy when you're out on the road must be a hell of a policy. Do we have insurance? Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm like uninsured. So. We're self-insured, like evil can evil. Yeah, right. It's kind of like uh, hope and pray, nothing yeah. happens. But uh, so far, we've been lucky, right? Go big, worry later. <laughs> so, what happens next then for the band in the near future and in the long term thing? Like, when do we get some new material out? Well, we're working on it yeah. now. I mean, we're we're at home in our little breaks, which aren't very long. <laughs> Um, just trying to come up with ideas and everything like that. We don't have any like finished, done songs, but we're definitely on our way to having some good songs coming right. up. And we Back have a, in the summer. Yeah, we have um, festivals, Dynamo in in um, Holland in June. Yeah, right. and we're, we're gonna go to Israel and, and play. Yep. Yeah, and so it's gonna be good. But as soon as we can get a break where we have more than a month. That's when we're going to really crack down and write Double a record. Down. Nine to five job writing. <laughs> right. you know? we're, we're lucky, though, that we have kind of a makeshift and eight track studio in our, our horn player's house, and that's really Dog Eat Dog Central, where right. a lot of the writing's going down. Whereas we really didn't have that before. We used to practice in Dave's basement, and it was only like, right. when mom's out, we can do it. You know? <laughs> so now we really have a place where we can concentrate and work. And as soon as you know, we get a little bit of time off the road, we're going to put some songs together and bring some new songs with us this summer when we do the festivals. I'm sure we're going to be on one of the uh, you know, major English festivals, right. so we'll be back here well, for sure. We hope so. Thanks a lot. It's been an absolute Thanks. pleasure talking Thank to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's have some take, more doggy Take care.